Good evening, everybody. It is 8:14 July 6th. All right, you guys. It's kind of busy today. God bless you. In the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I was a little, a lot of running today. Actually, I didn't even make the radio broadcast. Um, but let me read some. I'm gonna pick up where I left off. And. Uh, Let me, uh, somebody else drove this back. Oops. Got to straighten this thing out, excuse me. All right, you guys. Here we go. God bless you guys. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? Straighten this thing out a little bit. Whew! Cook out tomorrow. This is where I left off at. This is a uh, call to holiness, you guys. It's quite a bit here. I'm not going to be able to get it all today. I'll probably do some tomorrow, even at the barbecue. We witnessed with a lot of people today down at the restaurant. I was surprised to see so many people. Um, we had some company come in. We all had t-shirts on like this and a lot of people got a lot of people looking and talking. And uh, so we started witnessing the times, the end times, all while we were having dinner. And uh, it was great actually, it was amazing. But, uh, and we were talking about how important it is that we come out, be the light in, in places to let people see the light because going into a church is like going into your closet today. We're in the end times, and this is the time we need to come out into the open and shine our light. That's why Trump, when he said this, 250 million Christians, where are you? You know, we need to come out, be seen. 250 million Christians, that's a lot of people. That's a whole lot of people. If more of them were coming out, I would be, we would see it, wouldn't we? This is the time to be our light and be shining our light, you guys. Here we go. In Leviticus 19, holiness is not merely symbolized by avoiding that which is declared to be ceremonial unclean. Instead, holiness is defined in terms of respect for one's parents. 19.3 Generosity towards the poor. 19.9-10 through 10. This is Leviticus, okay? Uh, honesty, 19, verse 11. Justice, 19, 11 through 18. And love for one another's, for one's neighbor, 19, 17 through 18. In chapter 20, holiness encompasses the entire spectrum of human conduct and all the laws God had laid down. As for the person who turns to mediums or spiritualists to, to play the harlot of, after them, I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. You shall consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes and practice them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Leviticus chapter 20, 6 through 8. You see how important this is, you guys? Boy, we've majorly fallen away. That's why we don't see the light out like it should be. Okay? I believe this is called the Bible Belt for a reason. And I think during the, uh, the last end days, you're going to see where this is going to be a, uh, like a revival where people are gonna to come together and they're gonna be going, you know, they knew, they're gonna know that they they should have been out in the light, shining their light. And they're gonna know what scriptures was, you know, when it says, you know, you don't take the light and put it in the closet or under a bushel. It goes out, uh, a light on a hill for all to see. Saltiness, you know, how, how do you know how salty it is when it's always in one place once a week you know coming out once a week 
You see what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot of hope for this. There's, I think that's the reason why this is called the Bible Belt. We have to look at what the true end result, what I believe it's going to be, is these areas are going to be a stronghold for the those that are going to be left behind. They're still saints, but they're going to be martyrs. They're going to be strengthened. And uh, let's pray for them, you guys. And hopefully, even right now, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They could still come out. They could still be the light. We're still going to, we're going to see things. Nobody's going nowhere. That's why I say don't worry about a rapture day. We're going to be seeing things before we go anywhere. That's why you need to be strong. You need to be bold. You need to be a light right now. Okay? Love not this life. Don't worry about it. You know? Try to do what's pleasing to the Lord right now. In spite of it all. Okay. For as, as for the person who turns... Okay, I did that. The Old Testament prophets continually stress the principles of holiness. Not the minute details of the law. In the words of our Lord... They, unlike the scribes and the Pharisees of his day, emphasizes the camel of the law rather than the gnats. See Matthew chapter 23, 23 and 24. With what shall I come to the Lord and bow myself before the God on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings, with yearling calves? Does the Lord take delight in thousands of rams, in ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn for my rebellious acts, the first of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good? What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? All right, you guys. God bless you. I made it back. Uh, that's our our sister in Christ, Kay. She came down for. She's gonna be here for four or five days, and she's staying in the bunkhouse. Her and her mom. And uh, I just helped him carry in the cooler. So let me get back to it. All right. You guys, the Old Testament prophets continually stressed the principles of holiness. Okay, Jesus didn't come here to do away with the Old Testament. Don't forget that. And you guys will never hear me saying, and your future sins. Jesus came here to destroy the works of it. And he told you how to overcome it. And it also says... Those who abide in God sin not. Okay? That's why a lot of people say once, they, once they're saved, they can never lose it. Well, they're not telling you if you're sinning, you never had it. Scripture tells you this. Okay? Those that fear God, they depart from evil. Okay? The scripture says this. There's a lot of scriptures that people aren't even mentioning. That's why it's so important that you take time and read those scriptures. You can look them up. They'll, I give you the everything. I give you the chapters, the verses. All you got to do is look them up, read them. Okay? Sin is like a bad habit. It's a choice. Okay? And Satan, remember he deceived the whole wide world here? Well, he's still doing it. And once you know the truth, the truth will set you free. That's what Jesus came here to do. Not to continue in it. Yes, you can repent of your sins, but you can also get a seared conscience or something worse can happen to you. That's all in scripture, you guys. These people telling you future sins aren't telling you that. It, you gotta, you guys, it, you gotta ask yourself, why aren't they telling you that? Why? Okay. Okay, they constantly stress the principles of holiness, not the minute details of the law. In the words of our Lord, they, unlike the scribes and the Pharisees of his day, emphasize the camels. You know, that's why Jesus said, you, you strain at a, uh, 
had camels and rather than the gnats. That's why it says, see Matthews chapter 23, 23 through 24. You know, where he got at him on the temple. Remember, he said, you won't see me here again until you learn to cry. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's going to be some difficult times, man. Only the remnant over there is going to be saved. That's why I said this here being the Bible Belt. Only a remnant over here. You know, there's going to be some hard times coming. And it's coming all over the world. We're in the times, you guys. This is it. With what shall I come to the Lord and bow myself before the God on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings? Does the Lord take delight in thousands of rams? Ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I, shall I present my firstborn for a rebellious act? The fruit of my body? You but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah chapter 6, 6 through 8. Jesus' definition of holiness was one of the bones of contingent between Jesus and the Jews, religious leaders of his day. In his famous Sermon on the Mount, Matthews 5 through 7, Jesus drew the lines which distinguished his teachings from that of contemporary Judaism. He shocked the smugly self righteous Jews by calling those blessed whom they regarded as accursed. Chapter 5, 3 through 12. He told the people that the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees would never get them to heaven. 520. He distinguished their teachings of the law from his own, showing that they had a very uh, legalistic view of the law rather than an appreciation for his underlying principles. Chapter 5, 21 through 48. He warned of external religion which is big on appearance, but lacking in heart. Chapter 6, 1 through 34. He spoke of wolves and false teachers who claimed to know and serve him, but whom he had never known. Chapter 7, 13 through 23. You guys, this is deep. Mark's Gospel describes an incident which laid the foundations for radical change. Although Peter was present, it would not be until after our Lord's death, burial, and resurrection that he understood what it meant. Okay, you guys, it's getting late here. I'm going to upload this. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't have enough time to do a longer video. But uh, I got to get in and relax, and it's getting late now. And I'll get up and do an early morning video, and I'll probably get a nice one out before I go down for the barbecue and uh, upload that and then I'll probably do one at the barbecue after I get through cooking okay I'll probably want to sit in this air conditioned vehicle and cool off anyhow this is where I'm leaving off at okay and the Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered together I think it's going to be very interesting you guys it's just going to take me a while to get through it pretty soon I'll be able to really start getting into this and uh Well, it's going to take us a little while to do it. Maybe four or five more videos. But, you'll never hear me saying your future sins. I will tell you, though, all who call the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of their sins, all their past and present sins will be forgiven. Okay? But, Remember this, scripture says, Jesus warned him, he said, sin no more, something worse can come upon you. Guys, this is a spiritual warfare. They're real, and they're really all over the place. We are in the day of evil. Remember what it says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because now the devil has come upon us. Look at it. Our government's legalizing uh, laws that are an abomination to God. This is spiritual. Hollywood is all openly admitted to being satanic this is spiritual homosexuals with the rainbow flag that's the breaking of the covenant 
okay? These are all tears as well. Pray for them that they can see it and come out of it. But as it says in Daniel's 12.10, the wicked will continue to do wicked and none of the wicked will understand, but the wise will. So when you see people hateful, speaking against the perversion, the homosexuals, or any of it, that hate is not of the Holy Spirit. It's not of God. I'm not candy coating it. I'm telling you what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's demonic, it's evil. It's an abomination to God. Um, it's a covenant breaker. And they're a sign is what they are. And I've also said this. We wouldn't have that if this place wasn't already so evil and corrupted. There's idolatry. There's sin of sin to God. Look at all the murdered babies since 1973. People used to think the 60s were cool times. You know, the flower children sleeping around, lustful. It's an abomination to God. It's been going on a long time, you guys. Homosexual acts that now being passed laws by the government, they've always been passing laws that are an abomination to God. God's just had enough of it. Now you're seeing the terrorists being gathered, okay? That's why Jesus said to watch. Those who are watching, you'll understand what you're seeing, okay? God's put everything, he said there's nothing that won't be, that's hidden, that won't be revealed. All these things are coming to the surface, you guys, all of it. So when you don't understand something, then look at scripture and then you'll understand why. You know, even the church is not coming out in the open, being the salt of the earth. You know, they should come out. Being in their church is like being under a bushel. Okay? They should come out from underneath of it. Come out where everybody can see their light, their saltiness. You know, we just got to taste a very good experience of it just now. When we just went out and had dinner, it was great. Kay will tell you about it. Cynthia will tell you about it. It was an awesome thing, you know. But it only happens when you come out into the light, you know. We've been here a year doing it, you know. It doesn't happen that often. But, man, at least got to see it, experience it. Felt good, you know. God bless you guys. I love y'all. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.